The top amateurs in the tri-state area competed in day one of this eighth annual 36-hole event, and 40 made it to day two. Players had to be 35 years of age and older to compete, and there was another requirement to win the coveted Westmoreland Cup. You better be able to play well in strong wins. And they were strong. Just listen. First round leader Brian Comline of Black Oak Golf Club in Long Valley, New Jersey was the only player to break par in round one. He shot a two under 69 and had a three shot lead on the rest of the field. Fantastic golf course, one of the best in the state, without a doubt, top 10. Um, very challenging, very hard, you gotta be very precise. Um, uh, you really, you know, you gotta be careful out there. So uh, it's gonna be a fun day, hopefully. The two players three shots behind were Corey Creelan and former MGA president Alan Small, who we mistakenly thought was always near the top of the leaderboard. Uh, no, but <laughs> I, I used to be more. Uh, but, but used to be, wait a minute, what's happened? <laughs> I'm 63 now. Alan may be 63 years old, but still strikes the ball very well, as does 59-year-old Jay Sessa, who began the final round four shots out. Jay, do you have a chance? Of course I have a chance. I have two arms and two legs just like everybody else. Yeah, but you're if four my, shots out. I'm four shots out, but if my putter gets going, it's a tough enough golf course where the field may come back a little bit. Hey, you never know. I'm an old guy, but you never know. Also four shots behind were Ryan Chin of Arcola Country Club, Niall Hanley of Essex Fells Country Club, and Rob Johnson of Osiris Golf and Country Club. Brian's two-shot lead at the turn and one under for the tournament looked good, especially when Alan Small and Corey Creelan were struggling in these very difficult conditions. Alan hit an excellent tee shot to the par 3-7th here and made birdie, but finished well back with a slew of bogeys on his card. Corey Creelan double bogeyed number one and then added six more bogeys on the front nine to finish any chances that he had. Jay Sessa was five shots back with three to play, but left a few shots in the bunker here on the par 3 16th and finished in sixth place. Ryan Chin made five consecutive pars on the back nine, but bogeys on 15 and 16 ended his chances. Ryan finished in third place, however, alone, five over par for the tournament at a total of 147, only two shots off the winning score. To show you how difficult it was out there, only five of 40 players scored lower in the second round than in the first. On the closing nine, Brian Comline's two-shot lead over Niall Hanley didn't last long as he double bogeyed number 11. And then when he bogeyed the 377-yard par 4 12th, he actually lost the lead as Niall ran off three straight pars on holes 10 through 12. Niall Hanley was playing three groups ahead of Brian Comline. So when Niall bogeyed 13 and then bogeyed 15, Brian regained the two-shot lead he lost by first birdieing the 436-yard par 4 13th and then making par on number 15. Well, Niall knew he was two shots behind as he stepped to the 18th tee and hit his tee shot to the left side of the fairway. But his second missed the green to the left and he was faced with a delicate chip shot and a must up and down. His effort drew applause from the gallery, but now he had to make the putt. What a putt. Up and down. After being congratulated by last year's winner and playing partner, Michael Carger, it was time to wait for Brian Comline to finish. And after he birdied 13, Brian Pard holds 14 through 16 and had that two-stroke lead with just two to play. If Brian misses this, he double pokies. And he just touches it. Oh, it just misses right. That's a seven. It's time for the lead with one hole to play. Well, now the big shot for Brian Comline. Brian with a double bogey on 17 is now even. Ryan hits the ball quickly. 
to stay there, baby, because down that hill is going to have trouble. And he's going back down the hill and off the green. Brian comline has got to get up and down from off the green, ladies and gentlemen, to get into a playoff. The man's got to be feeling the pressure now. Well, that's not a bad shot from there. Leaves it about six feet, and he's going to have a left to right breaking, tricky little putt to get into a playoff. wins. The mid amateur by one shot over Brian Comline. Uh, I played really, really solid today. It was a very patient day. I mean, it was very, very windy, of course, and greens are fast and undulating. So uh, patience was the key today. I made a lot of four and five footers. You know, I had I hit a lot of fairways, which is key. A lot of greens, but I had 20, 30 foot putts on most greens, but just making the four and five footers was key today. Niall won with scores of 73 and 72 for a 145 total, and that's three over par. He now joins Dennis Lynch as the only two-time winner of the Westmoreland Cup, and longtime MGA tournament director Gene Westmoreland was there to recognize the winner. And the score, 145, Niall Hanley. Niall? So long from the Mountain Ridge Country Club in West Caldwell, New Jersey.